In this video we are going to continue a topic that seems to polarize both veterans and the newcomers. Firstborn versus primary space marines. Ever since the introduction of Cole's new generation of space marines, the range of their miniatures has exploded. With the Death Watch gaining access to most Space Marine units in 9th edition, this hot topic has certainly carried over to our list building by now. In the second part of a double episode, we will look into building a 2000 points list for the Death Watch, consisting entirely out of primary Space Marine units. If you haven't already seen the first part where we attempted the same thought experiment with only firstborn units, the video is linked in the description. Welcome to Swisshammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Before we dive into list building itself, a friendly reminder that I have previously released a beginner's guide to building a 2k Deathwatch list for matched play. If you are completely new to the game and haven't seen this one yet, I recommend checking it out as it covers all the basics. The link is in the description. I'm aiming this kind of guides at newcomers and older players returning to the hobby after an extended absence. As we have already seen when attempting a firstborn only list, intentionally limiting ourselves to certain units rather than making use of the full toolset always brings the risk of not being as competitive as it could be. Purely fluff elements aside, I do however think that it is a good way to compare what both firstborn and primaris units uniquely have to offer to a Death Watch army. With all that said, Let's take a look at building our Death Watch Primaris list. I do stick to matched play rules, they will also stick to units available in the Space Marine Codex and the Death Watch supplement, meaning no Forge World. This is in order to make the list as accessible as possible. First, I would start by adding my auto includes. Unsurprisingly enough, this is of course going to be the Primaris Chief Apothecary with the Selfless Healer Warlord trait. When going for such thematic lists, it is really a blessing that we have both a Firstborn and a Primaris version. In addition to that, I am also including a Spectre skill team. What makes this my personal auto include are the mandatory infiltrators, which we can deploy through concealed positions, and they also come with the amazing Deep Strike Denial bubble. As we will see later, a Primaris only army tends to be far less mobile, so this is where the infiltrators come in handy. I do particularly like the 5 infiltrators, 4 eliminators, 1 incursor with haywire mine combination unique to the Spectre's kill team, and deploying them in combat squads. For this particular list, I did however decide to focus more on the eliminators by giving the kill team the Aquila specialism, which left me short on points to still include the mine. That little difference aside, deployment would also be done in combat squads. Beyond that, I wouldn't want to put further restrictions, so we are moving right to meeting the requirements. As we are taking a battalion detachment, we have two HQs and three troop slots to fill. An easy task for a Death Watch army. First we will start with the HQ choices. This is where we are really seeing the Firstborn's reign supreme. First, a Primaris only army has no access to a Watchmaster, aka the Chapter Master. Also no Sinoface Blade for the Captain and Chaplin on Bike aside, pretty immobile HQ choices overall. Another thing is that we won't have access to storm shields for our kill teams. Again, firstborn only war gear, so we absolutely have to take the Dominus Aegis on one of our rage queues. There are only two choices for this in a Primaris only army the Indomitus Captain or the Indomitus Lieutenant. Now, personally, I'm not overly fond of lieutenants as I think their aura is somewhat redundant for Death Watch and I would rather use the HQ slots for something else. Therefore, we are taking the Indomitus Captain and putting the Dominus Aegis Relic on him. For the second mandatory HQ choice, I like to take the Librarian in Phobos armor and putting the Beacon and Chalice on him. He of course gets the Xenoperge Discipline with the obligatory Fortified with Contempt 
and premorphic resonance. For this particular list, I made him a chief librarian and gave him a third power on top. He can be deployed with concealed positions and get some protection from a combat squad from the Spectre skill team. This will help us to put one of the slow kill teams in place. As an alternative, we could also use the Chaplin on bike for this. I included him as the third HQ choice in this particular list. As our only truly mobile HQ, I think he is ideally used to roam around, while the librarian and the captain will be supporting our Gravis kill team in the midboard. Speaking of which, it is time to move on to the troops. With the Spectre's kill team already previously covered, the next pick would be the Indometer kill team, consisting out of five heavy intercessors, three plasma inceptors, and two flamestorm aggressors. They also get the Dominator specialism on top. Combination of this kill team with the rerolls from the captain, the specialism, the Dominus Sieges 5 plus single save, the fortified with contempt, feel no pain, and the apothecary being able to heal or bring back models is going to make them a nightmare to shift. As they are slow, they are ideally pulled with the beacon and chalice. The idea here is that because we are sticking to primaries only units, we generally lack the war gear flexibility. The firstborn counterparts have. The aggressors make this kill team more flexible and add some close combat capabilities. For more information on the Indometer kill team, check out my guide linked in the description. For our third kill team, we are looking for a disruption unit. One way to do it is through a 40s kill team with 6 intercessors and 4 outriders. In general, there are several ways to play a 40s kill team with outriders. Personally, I don't like 5 bikes in a combat squad as they don't count as infantry anymore and I don't like keeping them as one full unit either as it locks too many models down. The 6 intercessors and 4 outriders is a good compromise in my opinion as you can let the outriders keep the infantry keyword and still do something else with the other 5 intercessors. The movement of the outriders will still somewhat be impaired, this is another downside when compared to the firstborn variant in a Proteus kill team, where you can keep the veteran bikers together with a vanguard veteran with a jump pack. Anyway, in this case I am putting stalker bolt rifles on the intercessors, except for the sergeant, to keep them in the back. You could go with another variant, depending on how you want to use them. With the troops and therefore the kill teams out of the way, it is time to fill any potential gaps. One thing we are struggling with in a firstborn only list was the anti-tank. Fortunately, for this particular list, we can include a standard squad of eradicators with the heavy guns. I would recommend putting these into the teleportarium to keep them safe for as long as possible and to be able to deploy them wherever needed. The reason why they are separate is because of their total obliteration ability and potential issues when using them in an endometer kill team. For more information on Eradicators in the Death Watch, check out my guide linked in the description. To round things up, we are then filling up with a Redemptor Dreadnought, the squad of Blade Guard Veterans. These are adding a solid mix of durability and close combat capabilities to our list. I do particularly like the Redemptor Dreadnought for its well-rounded profile. Supercharging its plasma gun also only comes with the risk of dealing a single mortal wound upon overheating, unlike with infantry, where the entire model would be killed. With all the extras in place, we are going to end up at 1999 points for this particular example list. Three kill teams make up for a bit more than half the points and are also the most expensive units in the army. This makes, while we stand we fight, an ideal candidate for this kind of list. So what are the potential strengths and weaknesses of this kind of list? What I think this list does well is castling up around the Indometer kill team. Protecting the Inceptors behind extra heavy intercessor wounds and stacking the Invul and feel no pain ensures that they get to stay in the game. The aggressors can somewhat deal with close combat threats. 
The list packs a good amount of plasma to deal with elite infantry, as well as the obligatory anti-tank unit of eradicators. Bladeguard veterans are a comparably cheap yet durable way to push back against close combat threats. One downside of the list is its mobility, which can to some degree be compensated through the usage of concealed positions and the librarian with the beacon and chase. Getting the Indomitor kill team in place is crucial. Once the units are in place, they won't have the tools to cross the board fast anymore, with the exception of the chaplain on bike and to some degree the outriders, thanks to being infantry. What we are also lacking are cheap action monkeys, or just in general small units for board control. This is again where some of the firstborn only choices would come in handy. We are also entirely relaying on getting the Invalsay from the Dominus Aegis, as well as the Librarian being able to cast his powers. With no access to company veterans and their amazing bodyguard ability, our characters are at risk of being sniped more easily, in which case, the army would instantly lose a lot of its durability. But I think that a primaris only list tends to do better than a firstborn only list in terms of raw output. There is again a major opportunity cost attached by not being able to take some of the HQs or the command squad. While the firstborn only or primaris only lists are primarily a thematic choice, I think that they also serve as a good way to discover strengths and weaknesses of popular unit choices for a Death Watch army. Here are some of my personal takeaways for building a Death Watch army. For HQs, the firstborn choices have far more flexible war gear and deployment options. The command squad, namely company veterans and the company champion, are comparably cheap yet amazingly effective units to bolster any Death Watch list with. Especially when leaning heavily on Primaris and relying almost entirely on the Dominus Sieges for the invul, having Bodyguard or the ability to heroically intervene at a larger range is amazing. While a Proteus kill team is incredibly flexible, the mixed units approach also works well with an Indometer kill team and especially Plasma Inceptors have incredible stopping power. With the Death Watch's limited availability of popular firstborn anti-tank units, the Eradicators can fill this role easily even outside of kill teams. Along those same lines, the Redemptor Dreadnought is difficult to outperform for its points. Making good use of Outriders in a forest kill team has become more pricey and also more difficult because of the changes to the infantry keyword. A combat squad with veteran bikers and vanguard veterans provides a cheaper alternative to act as a disruption unit. While I am generally in favor of taking kill teams, Sometimes it can also make sense to invest into regular units. A full squad of Vanguard veterans, or even intercessors, boosted by stratagems such as rapid fire and special issue loadout. To wrap things up, while going purely for Primaris units certainly packs a punch, we are still missing out on several great HQs, including the Watchmaster. With the Dominus Sieges being a mandatory pick in a list like this, our best option is the Indomitus Captain, as he carries the required Storm Shield. Once again, we can build the core of our army around three kill teams, the immovable Indometer kill team, making use of mixed units, a Spectrus kill team for deployment with concealed positions and character sniping. Our third pick is the Forest kill team, for at least some degree of mobility. Outside of these three kill teams, we complement our list with Redemptor Dreadnought, an all-time performer in 9th edition, as well as some Blade Court veterans for being able to push back in close combat. A single squad of Eradicators is our anti-tank answer and is best to be deployed via the Teleportarium. Last but not least, we are of course taking a Chief Apothecary as well. For this particular list, it's especially important to get the kill teams in place as soon as possible. Once deployed, many of our units only have limited mobility. To conclude this dual episode of Firstborns vs Primaries, my key takeaways are as following. Firstborn HQ choices as well as the command squad offer immense benefits to any Death Watch list. An Indometer kill team combined with a captain, librarian and apothecary will be a nightmare to shift and therefore 
ideally used for midboard control. A Proteus kill team can fill a variety of roles thanks to making arguably the best use of mixed units, combining Vanguard veterans and bikers for instance, or heavy weapon veterans and terminators. While kill teams are great, sometimes it can make sense to just bring a regular unit alone, such as Vanguard veterans or intercessors. So that's it for building a Deathwatch army consisting entirely out of primaries. Have you guys been trying something similar? And what have you come up with yourself? Did I miss any obvious picks? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you have been enjoying this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.